I'm waiting. Battle of the Stars, commentated by Nuke the Stars, yes. <laughs> I've actually been waiting a long time for a member of Wunjin Stars to get nuked, just so I could be like, hey, it's Nuke the Stars, get it? Yeah, it's stupid, but I've been waiting to do that for two years now, and it still hasn't happened. God, so frustrating. And neither of these guys is a Terran player, so that streak will continue. But this is the second set between Free and Zero, the team matchup between the Wunjin Stars. Free took the first set pretty convincingly, I have to say, and uh, he kind of started out with a bit of a dis disadvantage. As a commenter put it, though, he went for a 12 Nexus, basically. Well, yeah, he did go for a 12 Nexus, so it wasn't that big of a disadvantage, even though he lost a lot of probes in the beginning, but it could have been very, very bad. He had excellent probe control probe micro. I mean, you could see it on Zero's face. They showed Zero's face kind of in a picture-in-picture picture when he was on his way down to uh, Freeze base with that uh, cannon warping in very late. He was smiling, saying, well, I've got this one. I'm going to win. But he didn't. And Free took it home. Excellently played. So hopefully Zero will not choke as he always does in round of eights. And give us a series on Dreamliner. Except, over at the 3 o'clock position in yellow is free. Born free! Okay, so down at the 6 o'clock position in whatever, orange is zero. Uh, this is map is very, very friendly to Zerg players, so I don't really see any reason that zero won't be able to get it done on this map. Unless he goes for something absolutely ridiculous. He could probably go for a two-hatch muta, as a lot of Zerg players do on this map against Terran. I think it could work out equally as well against Protoss as long as you have some Scourge around to take out those Corsairs. That is the big problem going for Mutilus against a Protoss, of course, is the Corsairs. But you can get that, uh, that air maneuverability, air superiority, that's the word I was looking for, get that by taking down the Corsairs with the Scourge. So that's what I think Zero should do. Most other Zerg players seem to just go for four hatcheries. I saw Actions game against a Protoss player, I forget, I think it was Bisu on this map. Yeah, since that was in Group A, that must have been Bisu. And uh, I think Bisu went for a Corsair Reaver or something, and Action ended up using some very good tactics. Actually, that was probably against Lita. Yeah, it was against Lita. I was trying to compare this to Protoss, but I thought of a TVZ game on this map. Whatever. But yeah, I ended up using Burrow and stuff like that. That could work out equally well against the Corsair Reaver build. But all right, let's get some predictions. From Here's one from Rabbit Slayer. Writes, free and zero. Most likely zero is going to take it if he doesn't choke under the high pressure situation like he normally does. If he does choke, free solid play is going to take it. I can see this one going either way. Here's another one from Cat's Rule 91. Writes, Zero will roll free with his awesome ZVP. About 9 or 10 exclamation points after that. And Zero is going out to throw down a hatchery, I believe. I think he's putting his second hatchery out at the far location before he throws down his natural expansion. This could be smart. Get that base up sooner so it can't be denied or something by free. It's going to take free a little bit longer to scout that, too. So, okay, Free is going out looking for the natural expansion, doesn't see it. He's probably going to go out further to look for that second base. As he's throwing down his Nexus before any more cannons. And uh, not pushing his luck as much as he did in the first set. He put down his Forge first, I saw, this time around. So it's much easier to defend against some early pressure. Although I'm, su I'm surprised he didn't put down his cannons first. Zerg players love to go for Zergling runbys on this map in particular, since the bases are so close together. But alright, now Zero is going to come in. 
He's going to see that single cannon with his Zerglings. If he does run up all the way, it looks like he just wants to deny that scout. He's running back with the Zerglings to deny the scout. And deny the the uh, natural expansion if he can, but he runs out of there. He doesn't want to get his uh, units taken down. Oh, man, Zero actually denied his own hatchery by running some Zerglings down to that spot. So, man, <laughs> Zero finally getting rid of the probe. That must be annoying for him. He was in a perfect position to put down that hatchery, but he blocked it with his own Zerglings. Wah, wah. The sad trombone plays again. All right, Free, going to get that second base up very, very quickly. The probe's on their way soon, I'm sure. And I expect a Corsair Reaver build from Freya. That seems to be the best option for a Protoss player on this map against a Zerg. I think so, anyway, because you can go straight for the main with your first shuttle and Corsair troop. Hopefully, you won't be intercepted by Hydralis <laughs> at that time. But it's pretty easy to jump back and forth, skirt between the bases uh, with your Corsair Reaver build. I think that would especially work well down at the 6 o'clock position because you could go behind the minerals down there if you can get past the hydras, of course. Get down there, throw down a couple scarabs inside the main, then just drop two more inches over and you're into the natural expansion, taking out drones over there as well. So that could be bad news for Zero if he lets it happen. Or if Free even goes for that. Who knows if Free is even going to go for a Corsair Reaver build. He could, ha could have something else completely different up his sleeve. But he is getting the full scout right now with this probe. I'm surprised that Zero let that probe in, to be honest. But Free might stay in long enough to see the next building. Unless Zero tries to be sneaky and hide it over at the 9 o'clock position. If he can hide over there. Or even at the natural. But here comes the Spire. Pretty standard 3 hatch uh, opening. From zero, probably going to go straight into five hatch Hydra from it from this. And uh, Free still only has one cannon up, so he's going to have to keep on that scouting information and make sure that zero is not going for an early break. It's the easiest way to win against a Protoss as a Zerg, and going for a Hydra break like that. So keep on the scouting free if you can. Uh, get by the Zerglings. It looks like he's on his way back to the natural expansion to get even more scouting information. Plus one being researched. And he's getting quite a few Zealots out at the same time as he's getting out his first Corsair. So I think he's going to go for kind of a Zealot pressure build, which is pretty normal for Protoss players to do against Zerg. Uh, get about six, uh, six or seven Zealots out. With that plus one attack, they are pretty scary on the ground. As long as your opponent's not going for Mutalist or anything, they are very, very scary. Uh, pushing towards a base that'll force your Zerg opponent to throw down sunken colonies, which wastes a lot of minerals and is always good to do. Okay, continued Corsair production from Freeze looking around using his first Corsair to scout instead of take down Overlord. Now he's going to take down the Overlord. Now that he has the scouting information he wants, he sees the Hydralist in right there at the natural expansion. More hatcheries on the way, pretty standard stuff uh, from Zero as another Overlord going to be killed. This is going to be two Overlord kills from Free. Put down a Citadel of Adun, so expect the Templar Archives on the way. Well, maybe. He put down the Citadel of Adun, so I know he's going to get Zealot Speed, the Zealot Leg Upgrade. So it might be a little bit longer before he gets the uh, the Templar Archives out. Already heading down with five Zealots. He's going to have that plus one soon, and maybe Speed at the exact same time. Free tends to have very good timings um, when he plays, so I expect them both to pop up at the exact same time, put a little bit of pressure at the front. The second Hydralist in on the way, but that's not going to stay there. That's just to block these Zealots from uh, staying out of that base. 